In this video, I'm going to teach you how I'm setting up the heat map and also a bonus on the practical side when trading it with real money, how I extra set it up. Because the thing is, I use several colors, orange, white, blue, and red. And on the practical side, the problem is that when having too many colors, that, that the orders, the, how thick it is and how thin it is, it's literally changing every day and it's just too much work on adjusting that. So there will be also some tricks on that and also how to make the heat map more colorful than it is to see more the shimmering for example that you see here on the left side so right click studies very important once i open the chart and then when going here there's this market depth historical graph market depth historical graph i'm going to open this one here already and i'm going to show you what you need to set up the thing is very important do not use from somebody else a template do it by yourself because it's your own money and that you understand what you stood up because it's a job and it's not a hobby. So once we, we go here to market depth historical graph, make sure you have one with blue. This should be standardized. So going from black, going from literally here brighter blue. You can use here the same colors. I'm going to show you a trick. For example, trick if, for example, if I go here inside, I selected my color. It says here add color. And then what happens here is if I press this multiple times, you can see now the color was being added. Now I go here because this was range zero max ask color. I go to range zero bit color, for example. Now I can select one of these blue colors. If I go here, for example, to range two, for example, I can do the same. And what happens is, is that once I go now up range two again, it should be always the same colors as you see here. That's why selecting with them once and then, and then selecting it from the bottom side so it's mirrored. So the top is the same as the bottom. When having the blue one, the blue one shows me literally that it's the background. It shows me the small order brackets. So for example, we can see here these walls here. So to see that good, um, we have a specific, we can go to our graphic card settings. I'm going just one through after setting up the heat map. First of all, I want to set up with you these two market, the market depth historical graph studies. And then we're going into that and also some practical tips what I use when it comes to trading with real money. Because using a normal heat map will have me a lot of problems. Um, reading the market. So when we go now here into, hold on here, we want to go here in value type for highest quantity color, we go to actual value and here also actual value. We put minimum volume intensity, intensity percent by 20. We don't change any, any other different things. This is very important. We put here the value type for highest, here highest quantity for coloring, we put this on zero and lowest quantity coloring for zero also. Number of minutes ex extended last known death. This should be standardized in 16. And then when we go more down, what is very important, if you have a weak computer, it, it says here literally that, check, your, check this one out, death quantity type to display after last bar. We're going to put here last depth. And the other thing is that show quantity numbers only after last bar, please. Okay. When this one is blue, actually you can turn this off. But I want to, this one to have only after last bars. What happens is, is that if in general is, is it is on in bars, what happens is, is if we pull the market out, to, out, like we zoom in, it shows us on each price a lot of numbers. And this is going to suck a lot of performance of your computer. So put this one very important to none or put this only to only on last bar. And if you have multiple market depth historical graph studies inside, make sure that not everything if you have a weak computer is going to use that. So on the blue one, I would not recommend you to put this in. If we go now to the second time. So what you can do is you can duplicate this one if you want. And then you, we go here inside. You can see I did the same here with orange. Do this by yourself, as I said, do not get another template. So once we did this, you can see here only after the last bar here, this is EN6 it's being called. So each one, each of the inside the study here has ENs, right? So EN6 is show quantity numbers, put us to only last bar. So it saves you a lot of performance. And then what I, what I did here is like, check this out, actual value again, this should be standardized. And then the highest quantity for coloring for the E-mean S&P 500 is 190. Lowest quantity for coloring is 90. And as you see here, 60 is just like um, the normal thing. And that's it already. And this is how I love to set up, set up the heat map. So what, what is next now? How do I set up the chart? How I can see more, I mean like more about the movement when it comes to movement reading and how I make it more colorful. So first of all, what we're going to start is if I go to global settings and general settings, when I go into general, it says here chart update interval in milliseconds. 
the eye can only catch up like if it's around 70 or 100 but the thing is it shows us here we can put it to minimum of 10 if i put it to 50 that's already enough standardized on, on your end it should say 500 so it means every 500 milliseconds it's going to update so it means like that it, it goes up or down every 500 milliseconds so it means two times a second and this is too slow what i want to have is maybe like 20 times a second 10 times a second so that's why i put 50 here or like 20 times a second i think is enough but we can all literally like put this like up to 50 times a second like putting this one low but keep in mind the eye is not able to catch up, that up some it is for some people very stressful to do that. For me, it helps to identify the small trend because if I can see a small movement there that is very aggressive wiggling up like sawing, what happens is, is that it helps me to shoot my trades into profit very fast using the one minute chart, using also what we're going next to the one range chart. Zero charts has a problem to go into ticks. If I go here into a one tick chart, it's going to be too much extended. That's why when going here to bar period, I'm going here into range per bar standard in ticks and I put this into one. So what happens is, is that when the price is going to move two price fluctuations, so it means like two ticks in one direction, it's going to make me a candle. So when pulling out the market, I'm going to show you what I was setting up into my chart and why I did this. Those are candles. Those are called OHLCs. And I combined them, as you see here, if I go to symbol, uh, not simple if i go here to bar period you can see here i did like here all hlc's not candlestick bars because if i do candlestick bars it's just gonna be very thick here and i don't want to have that i want to have OHLCs. i got used to this one to, to to read this because the next thing what we're going to add what is for me very important is ask and bid what i'm going to teach you as you can see here there's a nice shimmering in there right so this is the heat map that I love. It gives me full transparency. If there's something very thick inside, it will show it to me here on the right side. Um, uh, today, is, today is the weekend. That's why it's not going, going, going to show it. But um, we're now going here into the, into the chart settings inside. As I just said, OHLC is, I think, the best. And when going down to studies, we have now here the bid and ask prices. So bid and ask, we can see here these numbers. This is bid and this is ask. And what happens is, for example, if an aggressor is coming inside, so somebody's buying aggressor four and I have your hole, what happens is, is that literally just like so easy as possible to explain, if the market is going up, what happens is, is I, I have two lines with bid and ask, and this is a red line and this is a blue line. The blue line is at the bottom, the red line is at the top. I'm going to hide now the old HLC bars so you can see this for yourself. So as you can see here now, I have two lines, the red line and the blue line. And when the blue line is overextending on the bottom, you can literally see that, that the market is sucking the limit, limit order. So it's sucking liquidity on the bottom side, as you can see here. And then once the market goes up, I'm going to show this to you on the heat map live, like here where it was here. When the market is going to liquidity here, you can see literally the red one is sucking on the, on the orange one. And on the bottom side that the, the blue one is going to suck here. Like literally it's going to suck here on the, on the other liquidity on the bottom. So it's going to spike down. And every time it's literally like spiking down, it shows me that liquidity happened. The second combination. So we have like time and price and we have time and volume. So because of this, I use ask a bit and I use the candlesticks. And the other thing is what I also use is that once liquidity was being sucked, we can also see here this red dot here, right? So the red cross and the, and the green crosses are those aggressors. What I was also setting up when going into the heat map, we can see here, uh, not volume at price, so this year the, hold on, volume at price, bid ask prices, uh, this volume at price, yes, exactly, it was volume at price here. When you go into volume and price, I put this one to ask volume. So we need to search this one. This one is called volume at price treasured alert v2 and there's treasured alert the first version. We're going into the second version inside because the first version is something else. I put this on the e mini S&P 500 on 130 and then just ask volume. And then the next one is here. I put this one on also 130 and then bid volume. For me, it is very important to go to subgraphs to put all these crosses on the bottom off. So I have cleated this one on the top because check this out. If I put this one on, it will literally like mess my charts up, show me too many things, what I was setting up. And then also I can like set up here the color on trigger zero. 
The other triggers don't need to be changed, just trigger zero. And then what happens is I can see like, once I have liquidity, market goes down with the candlestick bodies, the structure with ask and bid literally, how much is it going to extend itself? How much is, um, how aggressive it's going to suck now in like literally like on the measurement on length and also on volume on the liquidity. So there, there are certain indicators that I also love to use. I love to use multiple VWAPs, for example. I love also to use an anchor VWAP on, this, on the hour chart, on the one minute chart. And if I place it on a one minute chart, it will be also shown on my heat map. So this is called the study price overlay. Study slash price overlay. And the study price overlay is literally helping me out to here, study price overlay. If I just like put this one inside, I'm going to show you how we're setting this one up. This is the uh, anchor we have from the one hour chart. Putting a subgraph, this one on violet, line, settings. I put this one here. You can see here my chart number three is the 60 minute chart, so the one hour chart. And then you can see here the hourly anchor we web, STD. I just called it STD because it's just like in my language and then anchor. And what happens is, is once I place it in the hour chart, the anchor we is going to be shown also in my heat map so I can see the structure and then I can trade where price is attractive. Next step is about like the graphic because on most people it will be like, if I look also on my video recording, it will be shown here uh, like about grayish, but to me it's, it's pretty aggressive and blue. And this happens if, if I go here to my Nvidia settings, this is the graphic card that I have, and I can go here going to resolution and under resolution, I select my screen and then we can see here, even though it's German, you should be able, to, it will be the same. It says here about the color digital color color right if i put this one up to 15 percent more this is standardized on 50 percent plus 50. if i put this more up i will have here more a better color sheet so it's not only about having a good monitor it is also having literally also um a good graphic card also so putting the colors up to 15 percent as i said and the second thing is that if i have a monitor i want to have a 2k monitor I'm going to show this to you by going into Amazon shortly. And then you can, you can see this if I go to Amazon, for example, and then I go here to a 2K monitor. This is something what we want to have. Just like that it's W, um, like QHD, not, not 2K, not 4K. I want to have like 1MS and I want to have 144 Hertz. And what is also to me very important, literally, it should be 27 inches, not 32 inches, not 4K, not 24 inches, whatever, 27 inches, because 27 inches is for me literally the best. There are monitors you can flip from horizontal to vertical, what are very nice. But from my opinion, like on the practical side, just a second monitor to the left or to the right for trading it is for my opinion enough because I can pull it like this together and I can only see 100 up, 100 down. So actually I don't need to put it vertical. Horizontal for me is very fine because I also want to see the left side for me. For me, it is more powerful to see the left side and like up and down because I want to see the past structure, what the market did here. Where did this liquidity came from? Oh, okay, this liquidity here came for example from this high here. Just, just for, for an example, this is something what helps me seeing it horizontal. And then I pull it on the right side together and then I can see that it's on the bottom. When using zero chart also right click and then going here to constant rage right click scale move are the things that i love to use and that's already so for it uh, what i also put inside is a delta profile i love to put also the six sig indicator inside but also other other kinds of topics if you have any questions if you need any help just let me know in the comment section and then i wish you all love by the way if you also need by the way a trading strategy the one that i'm using just go to tradewithjd.com slash trading. You get here my $7,000 course. It is totally for you for free. I paid a lot of money for it. I hope it will fill your wallets, literally that you get profitable with this using a demo account. And then if you have any questions, as I just said, use the comment section. I love JD out.